Hi, welcome to the Rose Hip Knits podcast. My name is Hannah and I come to you from Northern Tasmania in Australia. I can be found on Ravelry as Rose Hip Chick and my name on Instagram is the same, Rose Hip Chick. And I'll try to put it down below like I did manage to do last time actually. Today we're having a bit of an overcast day again, seems to be the way here on a Thursday. We just had a lot of rain, but it's um, it's improving out there now. I hope that the light is, um, is okay, and I also hope that the sound is okay. I tried to figure out last time if, if the sound quality was okay, but I couldn't quite um, manage to see if it was too loud or... Um, quiet so if you have any feedback on that please um, please let me know I created a um, a blog for the podcast just very simple to keep the show notes on and um, I'll put that information down here as well and there is a gmail account um, connected to that and to the YouTube channel so please any feedback just um, send them my way and I'll, I'll do what I can to improve things um, because I actually had a lot of fun last time with the editing and, and putting the video up. I just recorded everything really quickly and um, and then I just spent a couple of hours figuring out YouTube and iMovie and how to do things and it was actually a lot, it was a lot of fun. Um, I tried to keep it simple so I didn't spend too much time on it um, because I did ha have other things to do. Um, but yes, it was it was good and I'd like to improve things and I'd like to learn more how to how to make better videos. So yes, this is episode two because yes, I did manage to put episode one up on YouTube. So for those I think five viewers <laughs> that watched last episode. Welcome back. And if you're another person who managed to find me on YouTube, welcome. <laughs> this might be a little bit crazy because, um, yes, I'm still learning. <laughs> so today is March 25th and it's almost exactly a week ago that I recorded last time. And after this episode there might be a little bit of a break until I manage to record again because this is the end of first term here in Tasmania and then my daughter is going to have I think three almost four weeks of school of kinder and um, then she'll go back again so when she has that time off I'm not really sure when I'll have time when it's only me in the house and I can manage to do the recording. But we'll see how we go, at least if it is a little bit of time until I record next time, I will have more to show you, more to show you next time. <laughs> so, I do know with last time, sorry I have my show notes over here, I, I was really good this time and I tried to write everything down so I won't be so much all over the place. Anyway, sorry, they're there, I, I keep looking that way. I did upload a video, like I said, from last time. I kept it very simple. I did notice that there were some issues, like the the whole start or the few first seconds of the video were just cut off. And I might have been able to go back and try to include that bit. I'm not even sure if I recorded it or if the recording started at the point where the video starts on YouTube. Um, but I didn't go back and spend too much time on it. Um, I just thought, okay, I know that for next time. So this time I made sure to leave a bit of time before I started introducing myself and everything. So, um, yes, it was my first go. And I'll, like I said before, I'll try to improve things. <laughs> um, and I, I, did, I told one person uh, that I had put the video up on YouTube and like I said there were maybe five people 
who found me. And you don't know on YouTube. It could have been someone who just by accident found me and pressed play and then realized, oh, what is this? Let's turn it off. <laughs> so, but I did have a message from the person that I told this morning saying that she had watched and she enjoyed it and um, that was a very sweet message. So I thought, okay, well, let's try again. <laughs> Um, I, I might have been a little bit vague on a few things last time and jumping from subject to subject a little bit. I think I'm, I'm, I'm like that <laughs> in, in real life. I start one thought and I start talking about that and then I sort of jump a little bit or just end up talking about something completely different and I'm not really sure how it all started. So I'm babbling on a bit and I might start telling you about something and then all of a sudden I'm talking about something else. So I'm, I'm very sorry if it's a lot like that. And if there's something that I don't, like if there's a story or something that I don't complete telling you, let me know <laughs> if you're interested to hear what was actually the point of the story. I hope it won't happen too much, um, but you never know. It was things like, well, okay, last time I told you I'm in Tasmania, or maybe I should be a little bit more specific and I can say that I'm in northern Tasmania <laughs> and um, and I said that Tasmania is a small island and it's not really a small island it's compared to the mainland of Australia it is small but I think it's about the size of Ireland Tasmania but the population here is not that great I mean it's not a very large population it's still a busy place Anyway, if anyone wants to know more about where I live or anything like that, let me know. I'm happy to, uh, to tell you more about those things. But I thought um, I'd get into the knitting and things like that. Last time I managed to record over 30 minutes and that was not my intention at all. I thought I'd, I'd keep it quite short. I love long podcasts. I, like, I love two-hour podcasts, but really I don't often have two hours to sit down and watch a podcast. So I have to watch it in, in, in shorter segments, pause, turn it back on later when I have time. And I can do that sometimes. But I really, really love the podcasts that are about 20 to 30 minutes because it means that I can actually sit down and watch the whole thing in one go. And it's um, for me at the moment with how things work around here in my life, um, that just really suits me at the moment. So what I was going to say with, about that was that I'm happy to keep my podcast to 20, 30 minutes um, because there's plenty of long podcasts out there, I think. <laughs> anyway, like I said, I'll get into the knitting. So what I'm wearing, this is a um, shawl. It was a, a test knit and the pattern is called Welcome to the jungle shawl. This was a test knit by a Swedish designer. She's Polish, but she lives in Sweden, and her name is Iwona Eriksson. And that was a test knit I did last year. And this wool I dyed, and it was um, as a part of a dye along for the um, Dyer's Notebook podcast um, and that was also last year. With that dialogue we chose a, a photo to inspire us and then um, try to dye our own colourway from that and I tried to get some photos up of that and I'll see if I can show you. So this was actually a baby wool, 100% wool, and it was a white wool with small flecks and it came in 25 gram balls. And I had it sitting in my, um, in my stash for quite a while. I bought it because it was just on a super sale and I thought, oh, I can do something with that. But then, of course, I didn't really feel inspired by just the baby um, white with blue flecks 
colourway. So the wool that I use looks like this one. I have skeined it up from the small 25 gram balls and I dyed 125 grams, I'm pretty sure. And then I did it in, in several layers. So first I did a light blue and yellow and then I put a purple and grey colours as the second layer and this was my inspiration photo for that and that's um, Lord Howe so I called it Lord Howe by night and this is what it looked like after my first layer of colour and I used a method where you you put knots on all the skeins to get resistance and not dye the entire thing sorry like this that's what I did and then see if I have a photo of, of it um, when I had put another layer of color on So typical. I've decided to record this part of the house, and of course, internet here is sort of um, going in and out a bit, so it's not great, but I hope it will work. So that's with a little bit more colour on, and then um, I did do it in, in three coats, so like that. Anyway, it ended up like this, and then I found this test need, and I thought, yes, that's great, let's do that. And when I had this little bit left, I ran out of the yarn and I had not taken some notes of what I did when I dyed up the wool, but there was no way that I could <laughs> repeat it. But I tried to just do something a little bit similar. So it works out. You can't really tell when you're wearing it. But I love it. It's great. So that was all about what I'm wearing. I have a couple of finished objects to show you. I finished my test knit. This is Little Wren by uh, Heidi Atwood Reeves, is the designer. She, her designer label is Make Ready. This um, pattern is now up on Ravelry for sale. It's six US dollars, which is about seven dollars eighty-five Australian dollars. I did this in an organic cotton, like I told you previously. It's a size two. I had this in my stash for quite a while. I used this purple one for a different cardigan for my eldest daughter, and I had just not found anything to use. The rest for but um, this was perfect like I mentioned last time I really love the test knits because you you get to challenge yourself and you just have to do what the pattern says and you don't really know before you agree on test knitting what um, you will need to do in the pattern what different techniques so in this pattern there's a applied eye cord for the neck which I had never done before, so easy, and I, I really liked it. First when I did it, it was too um, tight, and because it's a cotton, there's just no stretch. Um, but the designer recommended that I go up a couple of needle sizes, and I did, and now it's perfect. And this pattern used a contiguous shoulder shaping, which I had never used before, and I really liked it. And then the, all the hems are folded hems, which is really nice, really nice finish to that. And this organic cotton is a uh, fingering. The pattern is written for a sport weight, but I got gauge using this. And it's been nice. I do take a photo of my uh, my youngest daughter, who is almost 15 months now and of course it's a bit big for her um, but she did look 
really cute wearing it. <laughs> she was having a little walk in the garden wearing her gumboots and having a look at the flowers and, and things. So I put the, the top on her and quickly took a photo. she's wearing it. So you can see it's quite big because it's meant to be three quarter sleeves and that looks like a full length. On her. So that's the first finished object. So that test knit is done and I really enjoyed it. My other finished objects are my socks out of the, the wool that I dyed myself. Oh, can you see what my <laughs> favourite colour is? <laughs> so, the pattern didn't really show up very well in this yarn. I still think they look really nice. I really like them. I really enjoyed knitting them. It was fun to do the patterning. It's like stars up on the top of the foot and all this patterning up here. So this is a, a free pattern by Lena Gerald, who has the um, A Wee Bit Nitty podcast. She's in Norway. And this is the A Wee Bit Nitty mystery sock that she released um, for free. I use about 75 grams, which is how much I normally use. I always have like a, a quarter of a ball of sock yarn left from when I make socks so I do have quite a bit of a, a stash of all the leftovers and I know that I could make a blanket or something like that but I think I'm going to try to match them all together and and make socks using more than one yarn so stripe them or do different toes and heels or just do like blocks of different yarns um, so I'm going to try that I have ordered some um, just solid colors because I didn't really have any solid colors and I'm going to try to see what I can come up with with different combinations for, for new fun socks and yes I did say last time over and over again <laughs> that um, I don't need more stash and I and I don't but I did um, fall down in a trap of the free shipping from Love Knitting in the UK. And I know many others did as well. So I did order some solid colours and some tweed sock yarn as well. Which I have been wanting for a long time. And I haven't been able to see, like, haven't been able to get it anywhere locally. So I thought, well, free shipping, I'll try it out. So we'll see when that arrives. But yes, it's those. And because these are on 64 stitches, I think, and normally I only cast on 56 st stitches for myself, I have quite small feet. I did go down to a 2mm needle. Normally I use a 2.25mm needle for my socks. But they um, turn out great and they fit very well. And for my work in progress, I have a few things on the needles. There's something I didn't show you last time, but they've been on my needles for a little while. And there are some socks that I'm making out of the Drops uh, Fable. In a colorway they call um, Sunset. It's number 310. As you can see I'm using high highest and I think they're my favorite needles now those and um, Addis I quite uh, like so what I am doing with these is that I'm trying the fork in the road pattern by Lara Neal and uh, making the smaller size and this 
is a new to me construction so I'm sort of almost at the point where I'll do the heels so they've been sitting to the side for a while before I have the the quiet time to sit down and and do that but they're my next socks to finish and this pattern is a, a free pattern on Ravelry and I have those in a little bag that I made myself which I quite like because it sits down quite well okay another thing the other two things I have my needle I actually started just recently the first thing I started was a stash, bust, stash busting helix hat by Jessica Rhodes who's one of the girls on Double Knit Podcast, which I have been listening to, I think, almost since they started podcasting years ago. And this is a great pattern. I have so many scraps of DK and, and other weights of wool. And when I saw this pattern, I thought, oh, that's great. I have so many nice colours that I can use for this. And... I think I mentioned last time that I'm doing the, I think it's called 15 in 2015, which is a hat cow with the um, Stash and Burn podcast group. And I've been trying to knit two beanies a month, and I've knitted one so far in March, so I wanted to do my second one now in the last week of March. So this one seemed like a good quick knit that would be really fun. I did change it up a bit and I did a twisted rib for the brim and then I just chose three colours from my stash. This is a merino cashmere that I used for a beanie years ago and there's some hand dyed which is a long colour repeat, I haven't got to the second colour yet and then just a purple or lilac coloured merino. 100% merino and I've been having so much fun knitting this this and it's it goes so quickly and just keeps you um, interested and just want you just want to keep knitting so I think this is like I've sat down twice to knit on this for not very long so it is quick so I think I'll, I'll manage to get this knit up by the end of March so I'll have my two beanies done for for this month and this is also free pattern and I think I'll make more of these it is um, really a great pattern the other thing that I'm working on I only started last night and that was one of the things that I told you last time that was um, going to be next on my needles and this is how much I have, not a lot, but I only did this last night. So this is the Follow the Yellow Brick Road shawl pattern by Holly Dapp of the Swift Knits podcast. I'm doing this out of the Gringanaski Bambi 100% Merino fingering. Oh. And this, is, um, I've only done the setup for the shawl and... It was really easy, but then <laughs> I got to the part where it said, just continue in the established pattern until you reach so many inches. And I had just been completely following the pattern, not thinking about what I was knitting. So I didn't quite know what the established pattern was. So, and last night I thought, I'll just put this to the side for now. And when I can think... <laughs> And look back at the pattern and see what I have actually been doing and figure out how to continue then I'll, I'll pick it up again so this I'm knitting for my mum and I do think I have a photo I can show you a bit. so that's that one so 
that's lots of fun. And again, I'm using high highs, which I like. How I organize my needles is by brand. So I have one little pouch with all of my high highs, and one with all of my Addies, and one with Knit Pros, and one with the rest. And I often, if I need, if I'm starting a new project and I need a needle, I first go to my higher highs and see if I have the correct size and length in them. If I don't, I'll go to my Addies, and then I'll go to the Knit Pros, and then I'll go to the others. And I think most of my needles are Addies, so I didn't use them a lot. I only recently started to get a few higher highs. But that's how I organise my needles, and it seems to work. I'm not too fussy about it. I mainly use metal, but I also have some wooden and bamboo needles, and they're fine. just depends on what wool you're using, really. What type? Yes. So, that pattern for the yellow brick road, I want that on, um, on Instagram from Holly. So that was great, but if you want to need it yourself, you can purchase it from Ravelry and it's six US dollars, which is about seven eighty-five Australian dollars. I do have a, a few things that I like to cast on. Of course, I have hundreds of things I'd like to cast on, but there's a few things that I know that I'll be casting on shortly. The first thing that I'll be doing soon as I get some time to sit down, is a new test knit and it's a secret test knit so I won't be able to show it And the, but the deadline is I think 7th of April so it's probably going to be published soon and then I'll be able to show the that test knit. But I'm looking forward to knitting that, it's always fun to try new things. Another thing that's not knitting is the finishing project is a bag that I made in 2009. This is a mystery bag that I did with, um, her name is Sharon Dreyfus and she had the She Knits podcast, an audio podcast, and that was back in 2009. I'm not really sure if that podcast exists anymore, but she did do this bag as a knit along. And I I just had this feltable, 100% wool that I got, and I, I dyed the blue one myself and the other colours came like that. And we got a clue every so often and I had no idea what it would look like in the end. And the last thing to do was to knit straps, shoulder straps, and they were cabled. And I had a purple wool for that and I started doing it. And I just, whoa, oh, I lost steam on it and I just put it down. I decided, oh, I'll felt the bag, that will be fun and see what, you know, because that was what you were meant to do. But you were meant to do the straps first and then felt the whole thing. But I just put the bag in the machine and because I just love I love felting. I'm not really into the felted things, but I do like to see things shrink in the washing machine. So I did that, this came out, and it's been sitting since 2009. So that's pretty bad. And I've decided that I'm not going to knit those shoulder straps. I'll just figure out something else. And I had these bag handles. And I thought that maybe I could use those and somehow attach them, there's little holes here, and somehow attach them with some strong thread or even leather or something like that. I just have to figure out how to do that and if anyone has any ideas on what I should be doing please let me know because it's been sitting for a long time and I need to I need to 
make this a usable bag and then probably give it away because <laughs> I don't want to look at it anymore and this I got this out because Shannon of the Heart of Wool podcast a fairly new podcast that I started watching and I really enjoy Shannon decided to have a spring clean cow and it started just a couple of days ago and the aim of that cow is to get some works and projects out and work on them things you haven't worked on for months so I mean all the knitting is completed on this but there's still the finishing to do so I thought I don't have a lot of things that um, I haven't been working on for a while but this will fit the bill and I can do that so yes I have until I think yes 20, 31st of May so hopefully <laughs> I can get that done so that's all the knitting I think I haven't been doing any spinning or anything else I know that I said last time over and over again and I almost stressed myself out by watching myself keep saying I don't have time, I don't have time, I wish I had time and having no time is, is always true in, in some sense when you have little children because and I know other parents would um, recognise or yes recognise this that you do have time you often have a lot of time because you can't really go out and do a lot of things but the time you have is not your own time if you're at home with children you never know how long things are going to take you never know when you next have to drop everything and and go and do something for your child or if your child's going to yes, need help if you need to prepare some food quickly anything like that so the time you have that you know that you can do something for yourself is quite limited. But of course, you can learn to, to use your time in the most efficient way. And that's one of the things I've been working on a lot is to try to have sort of a plan for the day and know what I need to get done and not let time slip away from me because that's very easy with children you time just flies away you can sit down and play with your children and all of a sudden the time that you were going to do something else has has been and gone and it's too late so talking about things that I've learned lately really um, that's something that I'm always working on time management and what I wanted to say with that, what, that I have been thinking about since last week when I recorded, is that I thought that podcasting and sitting down, taking this time, would take time away from other things. And that's maybe why I've been waiting for quite a while to, to try podcasting, because I thought, oh, I don't know that I can take that time away from cleaning and keeping the house tidy playing with my children, doing other jobs, doing my bookkeeping work. But it turns out, so far anyway, it's only been a week, that having the podcast and having this thing that I really want to get done has made my time management more efficient and it sort of has... Um, it's given me more of a plan for the week and not just sort of for the day that this is what I need to get done. Let's try to do it this way. I know that I have this day that I, I want to record. I want to know that the house is clean and tidy. Little jobs are done. And also organising my knitting and knowing that, okay, well, you know, I have these socks, they only need to weave in the ends and then they'll be finished. Maybe if I just do that, I can show that and not have them lying around for two months until I decide that, okay, well, maybe I should weave in the ends on those socks because that's often 
what I do. When the knitting is done, I'm sort of I'm happy to go on to the next thing. And I always have several projects just in a pile that needs to have minor finish, finishing things done to them. That's another thing that's great with the test knit, that you have a deadline when everything needs to be finished. And it's it's not to stress myself out that I do those things. It's not stressful to have that deadline. It's only helpful because I actually get the things done. And it makes me feel more productive and less stressed actually because having all those unfinished things can be stressful and you don't want knitting to be stressful. So that's sort of what I've what's been through my my mind since last time about the podcast thing. Um, and I was so nervous last time. I'm still nervous and but it was so much fun. It was so much fun. And I, of course I sound completely different to what I ever imagined. And I had a bit of a giggle watching myself when I did the editing. It's quite funny. <laughs> so silly. And um, like I said before, the editing wasn't as problematic as I had um, imagined it would be. And I did actually, in my, in my old job, I did do a lot of video editing because part of my work was analysing underwater video for different uh, monitoring programs that we were uh, doing at the place where I worked. So I did analyse videos and I did edit videos and prepare videos to hand in to different government departments and things as part of uh, monitoring plans. So it's it, it's nice to get back into those sort of things and remember some of those skills that maybe I have somewhere hiding. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that's um, what I've been thinking about since last time. And also, I realised, I mean, looking at the time that I actually managed to sit down and talk over 30 minutes, it's quite easy to talk about knitting. I think it's probably easy to talk about anything that you're passionate about and that you really like. And to finally sort of have an outlet where you can show your things and talk about your things that you've been knitting and creating. It's just so nice to get it out of your system. And um, it feels like you have completed a project in a whole different way when you've actually also shown it to people and talked about it and not only just sort of finished it and then put it away. I do, of course, put photos on, on Ravelry and putting all the information there. So that's one thing, but you don't really know that anyone looks at that. So I think that's probably all for this episode. I don't want to keep it too long and I feel like I'm a little bit absent-minded. I'm not sure and I have been taking this video in a few parts so I'm hoping that I can well, seamlessly, seamlessly edit that together but we'll see how that goes. If you watched last time and you're watching again this time, thank you so much. Um, I'm so happy that someone is watching. I wasn't sure I would uh, like people watching. I mean, I don't know why I would put anything up on YouTube if I don't want people to watch. Of course I do. But it was still a bit um, daunting. But yes, um, it's fun. It's lots of fun. So I'll stop talking now before I say something completely crazy. I'm sure I forgot something that I had been planning to tell you, but that's okay. I am drinking some peach tea today. So I will have my cup of tea and 
see if I have videos on my computer to edit. So I'll put some information about the, the blog with the show notes and everything around here somewhere. And yes, any feedback is welcome. If there's anything you'd like to hear more about or something you don't want me to talk so much about because it's a bit boring, yeah. please let me know. So, have a fabulous time and I'll see you next time whenever that may be. So, Take care. Bye.